So welcome to the next lesson um, in circular motion and the mechanics of level 3 physics uh, and in particular circular motion and angles. So in the previous video we looked at circular motion in the vertical direction. Uh, today we'll look at circular motion in the horizontal direction. Okay so essentially on earth objects move along a horizontal circular path as you can see here um, with this car moving around a curve um, and therefore there has to be the centripetal force providing um, being provided by another force uh, and in terms of skidding around a curve that force is provided by the idea of friction so what's uh, providing the centripetal force causing the car to move around the curve it is friction okay so there's three uh, cases that we look at in level three physics they are friction on a flat bend, as we see here, um, banked corners, which we'll look at in the next slide, and also conical pendulums, uh, which we'll look at in the last slide. So in terms of bank uh, corners, um, what's happening here is that a centripetal force is required uh, to make that vehicle move around that um, semi-curved path, as you see in the image there. Okay, um, so... If the road is flat, then only friction is provided necessary is to cause that uh, change in direction. Okay, but in a bank curve, that slightly changes. Um, in terms of a bank curve, then the angle theta, um, the horizontal for the bend of the radius r, then there'll be a normal force, and it will be provided by two components this time. Uh, on a flat road, there's only one component. Okay, the, uh, the weight force going down, but you've also got the normal gust going straight up. Uh, in Newton's third law, the equal and opposite direction. Okay, Newton's uh, force pairs. But in bank curves, you have a vertical support component, um, Rv, and a, also a horizontal centripetal component, uh, which is known as Rh. Okay, so at this particular speed that's going around the bank curve, the vehicle is not reliant on friction at all to complete the bend. Okay, friction doesn't actually uh, involve uh, be involved in bank curves, as it would be if it was just a flat curve. Okay, so when traveling around a bend at ideal speed, a vehicle travels around a horizontal circular path. Okay, so that means that the, the reaction uh, vertical component equals the force of gravity. Uh, if it's circular, um, then the horizontal component of the normal force provides a centripetal force. Okay, so that would mean that uh, the uh, Rh is going to be equal to the centripetal force, okay, therefore uh, tan theta uh, for that particular banked curve will equal the uh, centripetal force or the force of gravity times tan, tan theta, okay, and if you substitute um, the centripetal force being mv squared over r, then the gravitational force mg be rearranged to give the uh, ideal uh, velocity as a square root of, of g times the radius multiplied by tan theta of the, the curve of the banked curve. Okay, so in terms of the pendulum um, circle uh, and what you end up with is essentially a horizontal component, um, the tension force this time um, and this in the horizontal circle of TV equals the force of gravity. Okay, uh, in terms of the circle, the horizontal uh, tension, TH, will equal the centripetal force. Therefore, the tan theta of that particular uh, pendulum circle will equal the ratio of the um, tension in the horizontal over the tension in the vertical. So the centripetal force will equal uh, the force of gravity uh, times tan theta and if you substitute again like we did in the previous example the centripetal force being mv squared over r then the uh, gravitational force will equal mass times gravity and if you rearrange that you get the ideal velocity of that rotating um, pendulum as being uh, the square root of uh, g times r tan theta all looks a bit familiar from our previous slide Okay, so this essentially shows that the, the speed in which a conical pendulum uh, moves around is dependent on the radius of a circular path, well, actually the velocity, not the speed, 
um, but uh, dependent on the radius of the circular path it takes and the angle of the string, but is actually independent of the mass of the bob. As you also see with the standard pendulum, we'll look later uh, at the time period of pendulums. Okay.